Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the Ramble, and we go from midnight till midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States of America. Whenever I'm feeling depressed, whenever I'm feeling down, the first person I think about calling is Bobby Slayton because he will depress me even more. Hello, Bobby. It's not like you're talking to Richard Lewis here or <laughs> Stephen Pearl. Or Larry or, Bubbles Brown. Well, exactly. We go on and on and on. I'm a... Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit of Christmas time compared to those guys. But, um, um, yeah, you know, by the way, you didn't call me. I called you to see how you were doing. Yeah. And, if, oh, I was going to call you, put you on my show. And, um, by the way, we could talk about whatever you want. I just, we can even talk about your trip to the dentist because I know how you always like to talk. You like Felix Hunger. You can do a whole show. You know, when I used to come on your show in the morning, if you had any kind of med- mental or more med- medical problem, you know, and I didn't have anything to talk about except plug my gigs. We knew we could always hear about your medical and conditions not, and the medication you were on and all that. Nothing's changed. It's still the same. And by the way, are you ever going to get rid of all that dreck be sitting behind you? Do you really need DVDs and CDs and Blu-rays? And Do you watch any of that crap ever? You know, it just sits there collecting dust. You have, I know. Is it for like... I know. Uh, well, I was, at one point, I was a collector of DVDs. But here's what happened. Okay. At one point, at one point, I had a slingshot. I'd go out looking for squirrels, but you outgrow certain things after a while, and you really don't need them anymore. So I get rid of my slingshot. Okay. <laughs> no, it, it, what happened is, I started. This is not all of them. I started putting them all on video files on my computer. So I'm. I put maybe a thousand of those on there. These are the ones that are left that I haven't done yet. You know, um, you know, my my girlfriend's like me. You know, we, we she got rid of a lot of clutter in her house. You know, her her late husband was a member of the Academy, so every movie that ever came out, right, for fifty, you know, for forty years, he had all this stuff. So she finally, you know, you know, now between Netflix and Prime Video, and the fact that even a great movie like Taxi Driver or It's a Mad 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 World, you know, it's like one of these movies like Goodfellas. Or Raging Bull, it comes on TV. The Godfather, yeah. Frankenstein, whatever. Yep. You'll never shut it off, but you're never going to take it and go, "Hey, let's watch this again." On TV, you're flipping channels. You go, "Hey, great, it's on." You know, turn to movie classics. But you know, anyway, I just took all my DVDs. I had so many of them. Yeah. And I just gave them to Goodwill. You know, and well, I, I, I would, except that there are. Uh, I would like to have a copy of them, and I still haven't done. You see, there's a whole blank area over here. I don't know if I, you can see it, but I have a blank area over there, and there's a whole bunch of them that I that I put on computer, but I still have them in the closet. I can't bring I, myself to throw them away. Alex, you're almost 80. If you watched one movie a day for the rest of your life, you might maybe use a half a shelf. <laughs> <laughs> you well, know? I don't collect. Well, uh, I can't tell you the last time I bought a DVD. I just, you know, you, you remember me? Do you remember I laser discs? Remember my oh, yeah, place I, with laser yeah. discs? I remember when, yeah, when we both lived in San Francisco, you had the lovely apartment in the arena, and laser discs first came out. I, I think we're all like that. When cassettes come out, you get rid of your records, and then CDs come out, you get rid of your cassettes, and then, you know, and then when you get iTunes, you get rid of this, and you keep getting rid of stuff, and then you have your iPad, you get rid of DVD player, you start getting rid of more stuff, but yeah, you not only had an incredible collection of laser discs, but you know, you would buy the latest, uh, you know, DVD player, uh, you know, cassette player. So when something came out, you would always be at Best Buy. Your, I think, your apartment kind of looked like, you know, a, a, a showroom for television where you could, do I need a TV in the bathroom? I need one in the kitchen. But what about what, by the time I go from the bathroom to the kitchen, we better put one in the hallway. So you, you could just keep watching something continuously from room to room. It was like a sports bar with classic movies, with different games on all over the place. Bobby, yes, I do Bobby, remember. Bobby, I'm 80 years old now. Don't you think at this age I've changed? Uh, your diapers? 
Good night, ladies and gentlemen. You're a great job. I haven't lost it. You still got it, kid. Yeah. You still got it. It's the Saturday night. <laughs> I mean, uh, don't you think maybe I've changed at 80? I don't know. I don't, I don't see you that often. I don't know. Um, well, I got, I, news, mean, I got news for you. There's a TV set in every room. <laughs> You know, well, that, that, you know what? That's perfectly fine. I'm still amazed. Look, look, I have a beautiful big screen TV uh, yeah, in the yeah. living room. Yeah. And I have one in my uh, guest room and I have one in my bedroom. No. And my girlfriend goes, well, we're never in the living room. What do you need that for? I go, first of all, then there's just going to be a giant space. And mm -hmm. I don't know. Someday I might get into sports and have the guys over for the World Series and make nachos. And, yeah, yeah. You know, we, yeah. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but it's nice to know it's there. You know, mm -hmm. and why not have it? It looks good. You walk in the house. But I know a lot of people, and I'm sure you do, too, that have never had a TV in their bedroom. That's shot. That's like having a bedroom yeah, without a that's toilet. The one What's the point? The, yeah. I mean, that's the only place to really watch TV, isn't it? Right. Well, you know, it's funny because now that I live alone, you know, since, I, since my wife passed away years ago, I have this not a big house, but a really nice, comfortable house. And I have a, a big guest room and I put a giant Oh, I don't know what it is, 70, 80 inch television in there. And my girlfriend and I will go in there to watch a movie or watch a big, you know, Springsteen or Stones concert because their sound is great. But then, you know, we go most of the time, we go, why don't we just lay in bed? So we're going to have to get up and go back to the bedroom. The 60 inch television in the bedroom, it's fine. Yeah, it's not we, getting we have, spoiled, we have you know? a 65 in the bedroom. Uh, you know what I say about, about the size of a screen you get? It is, this, it, 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 think about the relationship of yourself to the screen in a movie theater. How much exactly. of your field of view does it take up? So when you're in a right. bed, you're maybe a couple of feet away from the TV set. So if you've got a 65-inch set, you've got your field of view about the same as it would be in a movie theater. Exactly, exactly. And it, it's great. You know, and it, it's so funny. You start, I mean, remember the original TV I had in my bedroom. I think I, I was so thrilled. It was 42 inches. And I'm going... My iPad is 42 inches. 40. Remember when you were a kid and your parents, and you were watching Howdy Doody or something, or even in the 60s, and you had the rabbit ears. And, and, and I remember my parents got like a 30 inch television. Oh, wow, that's giant, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, the first TV set we got, how big was it? I think it was a 21 incher. I think so. Maybe yeah. it was less than that, you know? Uh, yeah, well. and, and, and they were small. And then they went to 27s. And that's right. what you usually had if you had a tube set. Right. And uh, some, uh, I remember Shecky bought himself a, I think it was a 35-inch tube set. And to pick that thing up, you had to, you had to bring five guys over to pick right. the goddamn right. thing up to move it to another room. Right. Now, right. 35 inches on a screen, you just pick it up and put it under your arm and move it to the next room. Yeah, you got five guys that can pick up a compact car and move it to the other side of your driveway. It's, yeah. it's, things have changed. Yeah. Things have changed since we were kids. Yes. But anyway, um, so what was I? I'm sorry, you know, I got all dressed up for you. Yeah, you really, this, you uh, really are. Uh, yeah, and you've been out in the sun, haven't you? Well, it's I, I live in L.A. and I don't work, and I love and I have a pool, so why not? You're the kind of guy that even if you lived in Hawaii, you'd be sitting in front of your computer and television. I know you. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean, I sit out there all day. I sit in my pool. I read books. Uh, about 3 o'clock, I have mm -hmm. a vodka tonic, you know, and it's, uh, that's my life right now. It's, it's great. As long as the money holds out. I have no desire to go back to do stand-up comedy. And it's... Uh, you know, you know you what, know, though, Bobby? That is an absolute shame, and I'll tell you why. Because you're, so, you're so goddamn good at it. You're probably the best there is. No, well, no. Well, there's a lot of guys that are better now, but it's not, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of guys now that I look at and go, wow. But you know what? And, and they're great. And, and they have the drive to do it. With stand-up comedy, it's like anything in the arts. If you don't have a drive to finish that book or finish that painting or pick up that guitar and write a song, you know, you know, and the thing is, I know I just talking to a friend who has a beautiful comedy club in Rochester, New York, and, you know, uh, because Cuomo, that idiot, you know, is closing all these comedy clubs, and you know the all. Well, don't call don't club. call him an idiot because that idiot saved my life. Well, they, 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 a real idiot. That was another thing he did that was fucked up. Yeah. You, uh, 
I, I like that story, how, how he saved your life. No, yeah. he's an idiot. I mean, you're a New Yorker. No, he's not an idiot. He saved my life. He saved the life of New Yorkers. I mean, we have taken, we're the only state in the country that has taken right. that curve and just absolutely bent it so low that the, what is it, uh, a couple of days ago we had one death in the state of New York. We have 430 people with COVID in hospitals in all of New York State. Uh, and I'm well, 80 years old and I had cancer and so I am in one of those com comorbidity groups. He saved my goddamn life. I'm still alive. I don't have the COVID yet. All right, well, there's friends of mine that have comedy clubs who are dying. So that's, you know, I guess it's all relative. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and comics that work in New York that can't work who are dying. Of starvation. Well, you can go um, do you can go do one of those comedy shows in a, at a drive-in. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, here's the thing. You know, look, there's a lot of comics in, yeah. you know, like Bill Burr or Brian yeah. Regan or Jay Leno or Jerry Seinfeld. That you know, not, not only are they all great comics, but you know, the drive to keep doing it. There's guys like Jim Gaffigan who lets you to his house. He he can make fun of his family over a breakfast and pancakes. Yes. And I just said, okay, that's all great. That's good. If you if you have that desire to do it, and obviously none of those guys are doing it because they need the money, um, but I just don't really have the drive to do it anymore, you know. And it's uh, and plus a lot of the stuff that I was doing, uh, it's not that uh, cutting edge anymore. It's not, you know, there are guys out there that are just shocking and, and you know. Used to, I know. Look, I was never doing stand up comedy to be cutting edge. I was never doing stand up comedy to be politically incorrect. I was never doing it to shock people. People go, hey, you walked 12 people tonight. I never did it to walk anybody. I did it like like Bill Burr or Lenny Bruce or George Carlin or Richard Pryor, you know, yeah. not to put myself in their category. But these yeah. guys were thinking, hey, this is going to piss people off. I think they did it to be funny and, have, and maybe making people angry or think was mm -hmm. just a little, you know, side dish to their comedy. But now there's just so much out there and so many Netflix and so many YouTube Well, there's one sensations. other factor. There's one other factor you're not bringing up is that we become so politically correct that a lot of the yeah. stuff you do is just not considered politically correct. You get heckled by, you know, uh, feminists in the audience who go, oh, me too, right. you know. Well, well, here, here's the thing. I've always had that, and, and it's always been okay. But now things have gotten so out of hand, you know, with the cancel culture. I'm sick of talking about it, you know, but things have gotten so out of hand. But here's the difference. I never made it to a level where I was playing theaters. You get a guy like Bill... Bill Maher or Bill Burr or, mm -hmm. or Dave Chappelle or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. People are coming to see them in a theater. So people know what they're in for. I'm playing a comedy club and you get some people who are, hey, we're just visiting Miami. We decided to go to a club. You know, it's my it's my daughter's bachelorette party. We decided to go to this club. You know, uh, people are on vacation or people walking by and, hey, it's a comedy club. So not everybody is there to see me. And I just don't want to listen to people's crap anymore. You know, whether they're Trump supporters or whether they're, you know, um, Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter or nothing. Right, right. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't want to hear about it. I, I'm not there to, you know, to, to, you know, talk politics or to be politically correct. It's a comedy club. But people, you're right, are so uptight now that it's just not worth the aggravation. I'm 65 years old. I don't want to listen to people's shit. I am perfectly happy being at home. You know, right before I called you, I was playing my drums and uh, I'm playing my, I bang my drums. I don't, I don't play my drums. Right. I bang yeah. them. Yeah. And I used to, very frustrating. I, and to, but speaking of that, so I just got a giant, a, a big screen TV. Right. And I put it in my drum room so I could watch drummers and play along with them. And all that did was make me more frustrating because I go, oh, shit, I'll never be like this guy. It's probably like Bob Dylan listening to Woody Guthrie for yep. the first time going, shit, I suck. I have nothing. This is what it's all about. And I sit there, I throw down the sticks, and I hate this crap. Let's go, go to, let's go back to you, though. You know, comedy is something that takes a great deal of work to accomplish being a good comic. Uh, it's trial and error. It's years of experience. You are now at an age where you probably are the, one of the best comics alive, and you're not using your instrument. And that, that kind of bothers me. You know, the only reason I'm one of the best comics alive is a lot of them have died from COVID. Thank God, put mm -hmm. me at the top of the list. The more of them would die, I could be, I'd be the only guy in demand now. Everybody would hire me. There's no other comics. <laughs> but, but then no, no clubs are like, open, though. No clubs are open. <laughs> That's right, no clubs are open. You know what? Look, there's a lot of guys. I, I, I was good for my day. It was, look, look, you know what it's like? 
there's no best anybody. And there's all the Bobby, like when Bobby, I, good for your day. I mean, you, that's like saying Jack Benny was good for his day. Jack Benny was just terrific no matter what. But you want to know something? If what? Jack Benny came along now, or look, my favorite show of all time, The Honeymooners, they put that on now. You know, people's sensibilities and people have become, I don't want to say more sophisticated, but there's a lot of stuff that doesn't, you know, I was watching the other night, uh, uh, a night at the opera, and my girlfriend, who's a little bit younger than me, um, I met her through Jeffrey Epstein. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> my, no, my girlfriend is in her 50s. Okay, so she's a child of the more the 70s, the love boat generation. She didn't mm -hmm. grow up with Get Smart and, yeah. and reruns of The Honeymooners and, 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 and Lucy. But, you know, if you watch a lot of those shows, so anyway, watching that at the opera, and she thought it was entertaining. I still find that stuff funny, maybe because I'm a guy, maybe because I'm a comedian, maybe because, you know, it's like Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton and Harold Lloyd. You know, you put that on for a lot of kids today, they won't find it funny. And it, I'm not saying the millennials are all idiots, but, uh, or, or it's just women that don't like this stuff. But what I'm saying is Jack Benny might not, or, or Lenny Bruce right now, if, you, if, if Lenny just came out and did what he did, yeah. none of it would, yeah. you know, he was a product of his generation and of his time. Um, you know, the Three yeah. Stooges, for example, were always idiots. I'd like to see them come along now. You know what I'd <laughs> like? Yeah. What I'd like yeah. to do is get back to that because we've run out of time here. But we'll do another one of these and we'll pick up for, at that point. Okay. Okay. Pick it up. Let's pick go. Pick it up. Ladies right. and gentlemen, that's Bobby Slayton. He's playing absolutely nowhere because he doesn't want to. So. Right. And also, if he did want to, there's no place to play. Thank you, Bobby. Right. Thanks for having me on. I'll see you soon. Sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, that's Bobby Slayton. He'll be back with us again next week. We did a couple of those, so uh, yeah. And he said he'd he'd come back often to do the program. So good. I love Bobby. He's an old friend, one of my oldest, dearest, oldest and dearest friends. Okay. Yeah, and I don't use the term friend lightly. You know, somebody has to be a friend. I don't just go, oh, hey, you know, uh, so-and-so's my friend. And I just, you know, they were on my show once, right? And they say, oh, it's my friend. Anyway, um, let me talk to you for a moment about something. Yeah, this is my show, and I, I get to vent my spleen on stuff, and uh, that's the advantage of this. And I'm paying the freight on this whole deal anyway, so I may as well get my money's worth, which isn't much. Uh, first of all, number one, I think I am stopping the monetization of these programs, okay? There's a reason for it. I'm getting a little frustrated for them, from them suddenly saying, or oh, demonetizing your show. Now, I post two different versions of the same show every night. I post one that was recorded here while I'm doing the show, and then I post another one, which they post actually at YouTube, which was what ran live. Inevitably, the one that ran live always gets demonetized. Sometimes I ask for an appeal on it, and they monetize it. But most of the time lately, they've been demonetizing it. Yet, the other show, which is absolutely identical to the first show, except that it doesn't have a lot of the promos that we have at the beginning, uh, 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 suddenly uh, that, that doesn't ever get, they say, you got to monetize that. And last week, last... Um, Monday. My favorite show is the Monday show. It's just something about at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Interesting bunch of people, amiable, all like each other. You know, it's, it's, and it, it's a sweet, quiet show. All right? Uh, they uh, demonetized it. And then I appealed it. And I said, still demonetized. I'm trying to figure out for what. What we did is we had Kathleen was on the show, and she we were talking about the fact that she didn't have a great signal coming through, and she says, I think I blew my router. And then we kind of made jokes about her blowing her router. All right? Nothing about, we weren't talking about human appendages, we were talking about a router. And I think that's what they found objectionable. So rather than make these, what little money I make off of this isn't worth it to me, uh, and what little money they make off of it maybe at least adds to their bottom line. I don't know. 
But that being the case, I would rather rob them of the money by demonetizing the show myself. So if you're watching it tonight, you are watched it without having to get a commercial at the beginning of it. Okay? All right. Let me tell you one other story, and then we'll, we'll get to our, our uh, panel. Uh, I have been a member of my union since when? Since 19... Uh, what, 1965? When, when, when did I join the union? I'm trying to remember when I first joined it. I got out of the military in 65... I went a few places, and then I wound up in New York about maybe 68. So since 1968, I've been a member of, of, of AFTRA, which has lately become SAG-AFTRA. And I've been a member of this union, whether I was working at a union station or not. And it was a little harder as years have gone on to work at union stations because my union is such a bad union that they allowed all these um, major uh, contracts to go the way of the dodo. So that, for instance, here in New York, you virtually could not work a radio station without having to be a member of AFTRA. And um, as years have gone on, they have so let these go by the wayside that now you find very few stations in New York that are AFTRA signatories, okay? So consequently, the union has let us down in that regard. Also, that meant that over the years, I wound up having to work at fewer and fewer what we call after stations, stations that were union. Uh, working a non-union station was okay because as long as they were legitimately non-union, that nobody had ever gone in there and tried to create a union and they wouldn't let it happen or whatever, as long as it was legitimately a non-union station, I could work it. Uh, but I have always maintained throughout all of that over the years my membership in AFTRA. And the reason is is that, hey, it's my union. And it, it gave me a certain sense of pride the day I got my first union card when I worked in, uh, where did I get When did I first get it? I think I first got it in Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. That's where I first got it. But anyway, point being that I've been a member of AFTRA since... Well, let's say 1967. Okay, how many years is that? About 50 years, something like that? I don't know. You add it up. Uh, and really, I've gotten nothing out of the union. They've never gotten me a higher wage or anything like that. Uh, and um, uh, I, there's one story I have, but it's too complicated to get into about the time that I tried to make my company a union signatory, which I did, and then when they found out that I was getting in, uh, health insurance as a result of it, because my company was literally paying into the union pension fund and all of that, and after about a year of it, they said, oh, you can't do that. You're doing that just to get the health insurance, which wasn't the reason I was doing it. I was doing it because I'm a union guy, and I wanted to be a part of my union. And I wanted my company to be part of my union, and that when I hired people, I could pay them union wages, and I could add to their pension and welfare. I had the kind of money I could do that. And so I was all for that, but they said no. And then on top of that, they didn't credit me any of the pension money that we paid in, any of the health benefits that we paid in for. I really got screwed by SAG-AFTRA. But in spite of the fact that that happened, I still stayed a member of SAG-AFTRA. And throughout the years, every uh, quarter, or every half a year, uh, I have paid the union dues, whatever they were at the moment, uh, over the years, because I wanted to be a member of my union. And occasionally I would work a union job, so it, you know, it, 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 it worked out to the better that way. Like when I was doing comedy tonight in San Francisco, that was, a, that was an after thing. And uh, a few other things I've done, you know, commercials, crap like that. So, but but basically, there was no reason for me to be a member of after all these years. Okay, but I but I have been doggedly. Well, nothing has ever come good out of being a member of after. I've got to tell you that, and I often have felt that they are a wimpy union, just an absolutely wuss union, because. Over the years, they have allowed all these stations that once were union stations to go by the wayside, to let their union contracts lapse or allowed them to just uh, go the way of the dodo. 
And that affects me. It affects the, the, the rank and file of the union. Uh, and they've done a lousy job of maintaining things in the radio business. Also, in the early years that I worked here in New York, I found that they cared more about the contracts for the guys that sat in an announcer's booth over at Channel 7 than they did about a young uh, uh, a disc jockey who might be working at one of the rock stations, okay, especially the progressive rock stations. They would throw us to the wolves so they could get more money for a guy every half hour to go, WABC New York, all right? So uh, anyway, I, I've had gripes with them all these years, but the one thing that they did is finally a couple of years ago, I'm getting Medicare, and I find that I can get their senior plan. And they had a senior plan that not only included my um, uh, uh, insurance, health insurance, but also Marjorie's health insurance as well. And it costs us a total of about $2,100 a year, which her company is paying for, okay? And it was great. I mean, you know, yeah, it wasn't, you know, 100% uh, or whatever, like some plans are, but it was pretty damn good. And we had, we had dental, we had $2,500 in dental insurance and things like that. You know, it was really damn good. Prescription drugs, I was paying a third of what I was paying under uh, uh, the other plans that we had before that. So it was really great. Well, we all of a sudden, about two months ago, we get a letter, an email, that says, well, well we're stopping that plan. What? Yeah, we're doing away with the senior plan, the retirees plan, uh, but we're giving you something better, right? Uh, we decided that we can't go the cost of this any longer, although they said they, would, they, might, they might run out of money in about three years. Well, you know, but they had to do this now for some odd reason. And they said, uh, uh, you know, we're, you're going to be able to have this thing called VIA Benefits. So today we have a call with VIA Benefits. We have this, this you know, mass call, this, what do they call, webinar. And they tell us their plan. And all they are is goddamn insurance agents. They're just basically saying, well, here's this plan, and you can choose from this plan, and you can get this plan. And how much is it going to cost? Well, uh, for you, it's going to cost uh, $300 plus. you got to pay for the, uh, for the uh, 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 what do you call it, the prescription. All right? I go, okay, how much is that? 320 bucks a month is probably what it's going to cost you. For the really good plan, the high-end plan. And then I wrote in, does this include my spouse as well? And they said, no, that's for one person. So all of a sudden, it's like $640 a month for Marjorie and I. And they throw this on us in uh, two months ago. And now, of course, it's starting to settle in because we're finding out exactly what the plan is and all of that. What basically AFTRA did was take especially, not only us, you know, the rest of the union too. They raised the cap of the amount of money you have to make every year in order to get their insurance. Uh, they uh, have, have lowered some of the plans and, and, and so on, and so that even the people who aren't seniors yet are getting screwed as well. But the seniors, and there are about 8,200 of us in the union, are all getting screwed out of this other plan, just like that. You know, it's like we weren't told, hey, you know, you got a year to figure this out and blah, 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 blah. No, or we got a year to figure it out. We want to let you know, put in your two cents worth. Let's see how we can save the plan. No, no, it's just boom, like that, you know. Uh, and and um, then I go online and I start reading people who are complaining about this. And there, there are people just yelling bloody murder. And there was a, an article in the New York Times about this about a month ago in which they said that people are going to be losing their health insurance benefits. For instance, if you have a wife and she's included on your current plan, this doesn't mean the senior plan necessarily, but any of their plans, uh, and she's covered at her job, uh, they're not going to cover you anymore. Okay? They also pull this, mind you. They tell everybody, you know, you have to make, we've raised the amount of money you have to make every year, $10,000. And you have to work like 84 days a year 
uh, and it's not whichever comes first. It's either 84 day. It's 84 days. If you don't work 84 days, they, anyway, they do this in the middle of a pandemic when nobody's making movies, radio stations aren't hiring, TV stations aren't hiring. They did this all in the middle of a pandemic where a lot of the members who normally would have been covered because they, you know, they had a job or they were making movies or they were acting and whatever, they're not working now. And they did this in the middle of this pandemic and the fact that people aren't working, all right? So forget about me as a senior. Think about everybody in this union who is just getting screwed by this union. And uh, uh, people have gone online and they're complaining about it. And I signed a little a petition that's got about 18,000 people on it. You can go onto my, uh, my uh, Facebook page and you can sign the, uh, uh, the petition there. But I don't know if any of that's going to help. I've suggested that what we do is get down there and we'll get out in front of uh, the, the New York office and the L.A. office and pick it, literally pick it, a union. Okay, that'll get you some, some publicity. Uh, and, you know, they have this big inflatable rat. Have you ever seen the big inflatable rat that they put out in front of places that they're go they've gone on strike over? I wanted to get the inflatable rat and put it out in front of the sag after offices in New York City. Just, you know, you've seen them, right? Uh, what they've done to the union membership and what they've done especially to seniors who, at our age, it's a little difficult, you know? Yes, somewhere I will fork over the three or $400 a month. Imagine that, three or $400 a month. And this is for only 20 20% of my medical. The other 80% is taken care of by Medicare, who, by the way, takes another $100 from me a month, okay? So for close to $500 a month, I'm going to be able to have health insurance. And you know why it's costing me so much? Because of my goddamn union. Because they didn't do anything to prevent this from happening. And screw all of them. And then they had this little video they run of members from our union, like Barry Gordon. You remember Barry Gordon, the kid actor? I think he was in, uh, what was that film? Uh, I can't remember the name of the movie. Uh, but he did a lot of films. He also played uh, Jack Benny as a child on the Jack Benny show. He's there going, hey, you know, I'm a senior now, and I think this is a great plan. And you, you go over to Via Benefits, uh, you know. All via benefits is is a uh, is a an aggregator for Medicare health plans, and no, they're not going to get you a bargain. And um, oh, hey, we'll 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 subsidize you though. We have a health uh, benefits plan where we we'll pay a little bit of the money out of your chunk of money that we give you, but I don't get any because I didn't work that much. All right. So the people that are being affected are older people younger people who, who don't make the big cap. Uh, you know, this is a union. It's supposed to be watching out for its membership, not screwing it. Uh, and, uh, you know, very few of you are AFTRA or SAG. I doubt if there are any SAG AFTRA people with, on the show So I or listening to me right now. So there's not much you can do that way. But, uh, you know, I mean... What's a union for if it doesn't take care of its members? And when, especially in a pandemic, especially in this atmosphere, they don't do anything about it, it's a crime. It's an absolute crime. And they're going to be after members who are going to die as a result of this because they don't have the money. You know, um, the, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, come on. Uh, you know, not everybody who works in movies is, has money today, you know? They're older, they're in their 80s, they've kind of run out of the big cash, you know? And uh, they need every little help they can get. I mean, the union should say to people, based on your ability to pay, uh, we'll give it to you for nothing if you really need it because you're a union member and you've been a good union member for the last 50 years, right? No, nah, no, nah, they don't give a shit. Anyway, that's my gripe. I'm sorry if I, uh, if I bothered you with this. Uh, 
I really uh, don't like to, but oh, a lot of people heard me. <laughs> it's amazing. Anyway, let me see here. I think it's time to go over to our Zoom panel and uh, Charlie Wallace and Robert Natali and Brian Neary is there and we'll go to them and uh, here we go. Hello guys, how are you all? Huh? Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me if I wanted to, you know, rail against my goddamn union. <clears throat> but, you know, it's... sounds like it's you got screwed. Huh? Oh uh, no, screwed big time. You know, screwed big time. Uh, you know, and and uh, you know, yeah, we were getting kind of a bargain with this other medical. I mean, it didn't cover everything. There were a lot of copays. You know, I, you know, you owe so much, you know, whatever. One of these plans I can get, and Marjorie's company is probably going to pay for it, will take care of 100% of everything, right? Take care of everything. So we don't, there's no money out of our pocket at all. But, you know, she, I, she wants to retire. When she retires, we're not going to get her company paying for it. So we've got to look into it and say, hey, here's what we're going to have to pay if you're not working. Okay, so I mean it's really so we're we're rushing around looking for other plans uh, to take care of this. Although they're all about the same, but maybe you know maybe we'll find something that's. But I mean, just to abandon us like that, and to abandon us in a year like this, yeah, you know, because the actors who might make that cap in order to pay get insurance aren't going to get it this year because there are no films being made. This is basically it's SAG, Screen Actors Guild, okay? And after, there's not a lot of television being made. Now, you know, in radio, they're letting people off like crazy. So, you know, you expect that people are going to be uh, uh, making this kind of money in order to pay for the insurance? No. Watch out for your members. Say, hey, there is a pandemic going on. Let's, 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 this is the time we take care of these people. Um, anyway, it's a horrible union, you know, just horrible. It's horrible because it's a weak willed, unthinkable, unthinking union. And it doesn't, it doesn't feel like my father was a union guy, real big union guy. He was a member of the musicians union. Okay. Yeah. Not exactly the toughest union. It's not like the longshoremen, you know? They, they, when they go in to negotiate with a band leader, they didn't say, we're going to break your legs. You know, they didn't do that kind of thing. But but he was a union guy. And he, in fact, in his later years, and upon his death, he was actually a union representative um, uh, for, uh, for for musicians. So I got this great feel about what a, what a, what a union is and what a union does. And... What a disappointment this union is, and has been over the years. I mean, this is not the first time. You know, years ago they had a, they decided uh, they were going to raise the the dues of the membership, by, uh, uh, they said they could raise by by raising the dues for the membership, uh, they could bring in twenty five thousand dollars more a year. All right. So I'm I'm at this meeting because I want to protest raising dues. Now you would think that if they want to raise dues, most of the people there are going to yell, "No, we don't want you to raise the dues," and that's exactly what happened. Do you think the dues got passed? Yep. What everybody's going? This is terrible. This is horrible. Blah, boo on you. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's take a vote. Blah blah blah. What? The, all of a sudden, we're paying more dues. My, I got up at one point and I looked at their I looked at their little balance sheet thing I had and I noticed that there was twenty five thousand dollars a year for the SAG AFTRA newsletter <laughs> and uh, I don't know you've never seen it but basically it's a newsletter with photographs sometimes in full color of people shaking hands with other people okay and that was it and I got up and I said. We don't need this newsletter. It's only a bunch of people, just it's ego, you know. Let's do away with the newsletter and keep the dudes the way they are. And they went, next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They wouldn't even discuss it. They wouldn't get rid of the goddamn newsletter. Like Trump, next. 
<laughs> that's that's my union. That's my union. Yes, uh, John. Did you get to vote for the Academy Awards? No, no, no. That's uh, that's. Oh, I, that, I, that's I thought that was a SAG. People no, that's the Academy. I get to vote for the SAG after awards. Oh, year. okay. Uh, where you know. That that's the only benefit I have left, and that's probably gone, because uh, it used to be that around Christmas time we would receive this shitload of yeah. what we call screeners, and I so I you know kept my membership just for the screeners, and um, uh, this year there won't be any screeners. What? You know <laughs> what's coming out? You know yeah. best TV show. What is it going to be? That webinar we had on insurance? <laughs> yeah, I'll vote for best best show by that one. And then the host on this thing. Boy, was he a loser. Oh, God. It's just, it, I sat here and I was just, I got this sinking feeling, you know. I mean, I've got to get some insurance somewhere. I've got, we've got to pay for it, you know. And Marjorie's company will pay for it. Um, but when she's no longer working there, then it becomes our responsibility and we've got to have it be at a reasonable rate that we can afford you know and yeah i got money in savings i got stuff you know and i could probably go many years paying three four thousand dollars a year and and somehow you know dive some other it'll make me live longer so i can suffer losing the money um and I, I can probably come up with the money, but, you know, it's just going to start robbing me blind. And think about that. 20% of my medical insurance is costing me, what, $400 a month? Hmm. It's insane. It's insane. And if you had to get it, if you had Medicare, do you have Medicare yet, uh, anybody here? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you got it. So you know what I'm talking about, right, Jeff? I mean, you're probably paying a big, giant chunk of change for your, your insure, your your part of it, and all they're paying is forty is twenty percent, and they're betting you're going to get real. They're betting against the fact that you're not going to get sick, and you probably won't. You know. So I don't. We need single payer. Huh? Well, of course. Well, we can get back to that, but you know. Single payer. Yeah. Who gives a rat's ass? Obamacare. Huh? Better Obamacare. Well, Obamacare kind of sucks. Obamacare is not what we should be having, you know. Better, just fix it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you can call it Obamacare and, and fix it. Yeah. Right. Hey, you yeah. can call it whatever you want, just fix it. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, uh, oh, it's uh, Kathy says, I tuned in because I thought the talk would be about Woodward's book, not Alex's medical insurance policy. Well, <laughs> Kathy, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> it's my show. I pay for this. I'll talk about what I want to talk about. You guys aren't bored, are you? No. For, oh I, I, I switched oh. it on and I switched it on and it was about monetizing. I went down and got a drink and then it was the insurance. Yeah, and we're, and we're, you know, we will talk about uh we will talk about uh, uh the Woodward book if you guys want to. You know. I'm uh, in a union. Uh, what union? It's a theatrical workers union for oh, like okay. actors uh, uh, is that, and is backstage that, thing. IATSE? Uh, I think that's it, yeah. Yeah, IATSE. My mother used to work as a secretary at the IATSE office, I think. In San Francisco? Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Those cool. those are the people who, those are the that's the stagehands union, basically. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, we'll come over and we'll break your sets if you don't sign a contract with us. <laughs> how would you? How would, I, <laughs> I, 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 you know, we, we have things called VU meters in radio that were the little needles that used to go back and forth. And I always used to do a bit about my, our union representative comes by and says, how would you like your VU meters not to work so well? Yeah. <laughs> we might bend them. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, yeah. American Patriot says, you tell her, Alex. Yeah, well, she hasn't written anything since I told her to go fuck herself. But, and I can do that now because we're not getting monetized any longer. Yeah. So. Mm. Anyway, anybody hear about this um, 
whole thing with uh, with Woodward and his book and his interview with Trump. Sure. Yeah. What, yeah. I saw some of them. Yeah, it's what, no longer surprising, you know? No. Nothing shocking. Nope. He can't go any lower. Yeah, but I mean, Information. my question is, how low does he have to go before he loses his own people? Yeah. That's well, just it. Yeah, I don't think, I don't there's think no, he will. There's no bottom. Well, I there's mean. There's no bottom. Uh, well, when, got a cult. When, he, <laughs> when, when they say that he says that, you know, <laughs> he said all the things he said, and then he told Woodward something completely opposite. Yeah. You know? Uh, that that kind of you know really makes him skeezy, you know it makes him irresponsible. And now the now the White House is saying that he never did downplay the COVID nineteen. Right. Yeah. What? Right. It, it, yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? It's on tape. You can hear his voice uh, saying it. Doing I, it for I fucking hear, six months. I seem to hear the echoing voice saying to me, uh, I may be wrong about this, but an uh, echoing voice saying. Uh, it's nothing worse than a common cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I remember that. Um, go away, huh? Yeah. It'll go away. Miracle will happen. Just with the heat. Yeah, be down to zero in two weeks. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if it wasn't for me, there'd be three million people dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I mean, I just it's amazing. Just amazing. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, how many people have died as a result of his, uh, well, I, I don't think it's a problem. You know, it's no worse than the common cold. This is all going to go away. Hot weather. Make it go away just yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, calling, calling the generals fucking pussies was a nice touch. That's a yeah. nice touch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking pussies, yeah. Woo. You know, uh, here's what I don't get. Um, you know, I don't know if you heard the Woodward phone calls, but it was an entirely different Trump. I know. Did you notice yeah. that? Yeah. That he yeah. seemed far more in control of what he was saying, a lot more, uh, how can we put it, uh, speaking English correctly. You know, do you know what I'm saying? If you listen to it, he sounded almost coherent and yet when he talks about it the other way he gets completely incoherent you know if he had said all this stuff way back when think of how many lives he would have saved yeah 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 uh, so i mean i you know i uh, where are you going uh, brie Bree's taking us on another trip What's in that his cage life. huh <laughs> i caught another in- civet Let's see. I caught another. Oh, no. Another Let's at, see at it. This point, at this what, point, what he, what he, what he does, folks, in case you don't know what he's talking about, he traps uh, foreign cars. So it's. <laughs> well, you said you caught another Civic. <laughs> Civic. Oh, Civic. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, let's see it. Take it out. I, yeah, I, right. I've been out there. I was out there. I just showed you. Where? Go get it. Take it out of the cage. Wait a minute. No, I'm not taking it out of the cage. This this one tops all the others. It's the largest, and also, it's trying to get out so much that it's damaging its face and its tail. It's bleeding. Uh, So I called the wild. I gave it another banana, and I called wildlife and said, "Get over here now." This, I mean, it is. It's so intent on getting out. It. It's just. It's killing itself. You know, to get out. Take it out to the beach and let it go, or something. I can't do anything. I don't have a car. And, yeah, um, he, he needs to get the animal control people in yeah. there. And he's in there, yeah. right? Plus, if he lets yeah. it out, he'll probably attack him. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> really? <coughs> now, how yeah, did, rabies. How, now, how, yeah. did, how, did, how, did you, how did you catch it? Also, these ones, by the way, are related to SARS. They, they were known carriers of SARS. Oh, God. And they like to, they like to spit at you uh, if you come up to them. Really? Sure is. Well, let's see. Go, go closer so we can see it. <laughs> I'm not going, no. John, <laughs> yeah. I oh, sleeping. Oh, oh, that thing's huge. Wow. Yeah. Sleeping civet live. 
Can you can you zoom in on that? Is it possible? You can usually zoom in if you use your fingers to s separate yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I'm at. Yeah, there maximum. you go. There you go. Oh, oh man! Wow, he looks like he's passed out. Yeah, he uh, give him another five minutes, he'll be going crazy again. Really? Yeah. And oh. I put the banana on top to distract him or her. We think it's a her. Yeah. Uh, we, we put the banana there because he, he, otherwise he's just running into the cage and into the hook and really damaging uh, her body. So, jeez. Uh, are, are, yeah, yeah. are they dangerous? They can be. I mean, yeah. you know, like a rat. You know, they, they, can, uh, they can certainly attack if they feel cornered. Are they about the size of a house cat or are they larger? Way larger. Uh, about the size of a house cat. Okay. All right. Yeah, That's like a main coon cat. That looks bigger than a house cat. Well, yeah, a Maine coon cat. You ever seen a Maine coon cat? Nope. No. Yeah. They get pretty big. Yeah. Okay. Um, wow. I, I have to figure out a way to get it some water. Uh, I'll wait until the midday. Usually well, they sleep from well, now well, until about when are the animal? Again. When are the animal control people coming? Yeah. Well, I hope that they come soon. But mm -hmm. if 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 history holds, they will only come tomorrow at noon. Mm -hmm. um, like, why don't you take it out to a field and let it go? There aren't any fields around here, number one. Oh. Number two, I have no way to transport it. I, I don't have a car. I, oh. I just have a bicycle. I could put it on the back of the bike, but it, that would be probably traumatic. And yeah. I, there's no fields around here. I wouldn't know where to release it. And this one needs care. It needs... Uh, they need to knock it out, and um, and then do some, you know, uh, first aid. repair work. Yeah. Hmm. What do they do with it after they repair it? They put it like I, in the wall somewhere. That's my understanding. I I don't know what they do. I mean, if they had a, a, a civet cat coffee farm, they could take them there. Dinner. It could be the same one just coming back to your house all the time. No, no. This one is definitely <laughs> different. We, what, I can what? tell them. The first two were very small babies. Why have they picked... Like, wait a minute. Let me ask you this. Why have they picked your house? Um, I think it's a combination of factors. Um, one of which is we keep putting all these juicy bananas out there. <laughs> well, stop um, with the bananas then. <laughs> well, I just... Look, I have no problem with them. They want to live out there, take some of my wheatgrass. That's fine. I just cannot abide by 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. They're chatting up in the attic, mm -hmm. you know. And the attic is, I, I tried to seal it off. It's, it's almost impossible. The reason why I think is uh, we're kind of at the, at the front of the Taman, or what they call the neighborhood. Yeah. And the houses on either side of me do not have rain pipes. Theirs are all internal. And then behind me, there are two homes being constructed upon. Uh, so they have construction. So I think on many days, the construction workers are not there. And I think the civic cats go in the house and go in the attic and they live there. Mm -hmm. And then when the construction workers come, they, they get, they get scared and they, they hear the saws and the hammers. Right. And then they come over towards me. I think that's what's happening. Uh, there are a couple of large trees over there where I think that they, they go at, uh, during the day to sleep, and then I think at night they come into our neighborhood, and we're kind of at the front of that that area. And they say, "Let's go over to Bree's house. He's got bananas." <laughs> That's right. Yeah. They say, "Let's go over there and get those." Okay. Those. Well, anyway, back to. Um... Uh, well, Trump has got the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, so everybody has acknowledged that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. What? What are you talking about? Yeah. He's been nominated for the Peace Prize. He oh, probably some, get it. Anybody can Nazis. nominate anybody. Yeah, with some Nazi in Norway. <laughs> Did somebody nominate him again? Yeah, some right-wing nutcase in Norway on on the Norway Nazi party. Okay, well, <laughs> he's not going to get it. Yeah. No, of course not. I don't know. I don't know. Come on. <laughs> he, he says he should have a few by now. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I, you know, I, but, you know, he wants, what he wants is he wants, he wants a Nobel Peace Prize, but he can't figure out for what. 
I mean, to begin with, for what? He's got to yeah. do something. There isn't one you know, for world's biggest asshole, is there? The, U- <laughs> the UAE Israeli thing, you know, I give him credit for that. He he had to pull a lot of personal levers to get that. No, but uh, it, wait a minute. Hold on a second, Bree. A lot of presidents have managed to barter a broker. Uh, peace accords between those two sides and then eventually they fall apart okay so yeah. let's just see how long this holds together yeah you're right there I, I i i told you before that a lot of these connections were kind of there they were just never um you know acknowledged well, what i'm saying is, uh, what i'm it. saying is but the, really- it, it, the, i can't imagine anything that you give them a peace prize for you know um yeah I, I give him credit for this, um, you know. Uh, I don't give him credit for it. I don't give him credit for it at all. Well, I give him credit. I give him credit for uh, what you know for brokering this this deal. What did he broker? I agree. It, 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 it's not it, as. Uh, and, and I it, guess we should also give him another peace prize for brokering a peace with North Korea. <laughs> yeah. There, I, th- I think he distracted things enough. Oh, that according, you according, know, we, it, we, did, we didn't think, you know, everybody was saying that we were kicking the can down the road, and people were saying there's not enough road. I think Trump built what more road. What was the term that Kim Jong Un used to describe Trump that flattered him? It was like emperor or something like that? What? His Excellency. His Excellency. Your Excellency. Yeah. Like he's a king or something. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. loved that. He loved that. You know. Yeah. He he that made Trump uh, Kim Jong Un's bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if it kept him from launching any missiles or whatever, so be it. Ordered this shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but by the way, uh, hello, Kevin. How are you this evening? Okay. How you doing? Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm doing all right. You know. Uh, so, so so Alex has been in our area. Maybe San Francisco, yeah, San Francisco too. It's been like orange. Yes, I know. I saw like that on the orange. news tonight. Oh, yeah. yeah. I woke Oregon up. Like red. I woke up. It was so dark this morning. I thought it was still nighttime. I was, yeah. I was like, I had to check my clock. Supposedly, said, the the, all the skies are the uh, are the uh, color of of Trump's complexion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's all all sepia all the time. In fact, if he went out yeah. to California right now to do a mm-hmm. like a you know a a. A, a campaign stop, he would disappear. <clears throat> yes, that would yeah, be nice. Like a green screen. <laughs> yeah. But the ash, the ash would ruin his hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it bad where you are, um, Brian? Yeah. Yeah. Really bad this morning. It was like it was snowing again. Lightly, yeah. I, I saw other video that was even worse. But just the orange glow is like when you're in somewhere and like the outside is glowing. If they say it's like a sunset, like a continuous sunset all day. Really bizarre. Then my friend yeah. showed pictures from Oregon where it's like a red color. Crazy. Wow. Yeah, it was all day, and I drove to Monterey. It was the same thing all the way down. Really? Now this isn't this is this happening in Southern California too, or is it less in Southern California? It might be because they got a fire down by San Bernardino or down by San Diego, but it might. I don't know about them, but it hit the 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 Big Creek fire is coming west. And it's joining up with Dolan down here, which is Big Sur, and then the north, the north winds are bringing the stuff down towards the Bay Area. There's one up in the north end of the uh, Guerneville up there by the Guerneville, and that's all coming south. So they're all just kind of conglomerating, and it's uh yeah, it's just like a, it's just this big haze. You can't see shit. It's which is the, the uh, sun today. Which is the uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, which is the uh, uh, the gender reveal party fire? That's the one down south, yeah. That's oh, the one. Yeah. We just oh, talk right. with gender reveal parties. We just, you know. It's, no. it's so stupid. Why would you set off fireworks during a drought? And I would suggest you do your gender reveal party once the kid becomes 18, because things do change, you know. Yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> hey, we did a gender reveal. We just told everybody she was that's a girl. That's all. Yeah. That was our reveal it's, party. Well, <laughs> did you see? Uh, there was one. If you look it up online, this is poetic justice. There was a guy doing a uh, gender reveal, 
Yeah. And they had this uh, Roman candle supposed to shoot up into the sky. Mm-hmm. He had it reversed right at his oh. crotch. Oh. <laughs> they, got, they got video. Well, that they got was, video that, of it online. Well, that's fine because that changed his gender. Gender <laughs> repeals. Yeah. Yeah. Gender repeal. <laughs> <laughs> No oh, boy. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, the you know the whole thing with uh, uh, with with Trump is is uh, what is it you know it's like my I said before what does it take what what would it take to get you to vote for Biden? Uh, you know, uh, is anything going to convince his people? No. Th- these troglodytes that are going to vote for him. No. Because all Biden has to do is stay out of the way. And Trump's pretty much going to lose this one on his own. You know, because it gets worse every day. I mean, armed with the information that people are armed with now, how do they vote for Trump under any conditions? Well, we didn't get an answer on that one. Yes, you, Charlie. I just don't understand how any seniors could vote for him. He's, he's promised to defund Social Security and Medicare if he's reelected. So why would any senior ever consider voting for him? Hmm. Well, hmm. you know, if he wants to defund Medicare, best thing he could do is probably become the president of my union. There you go. Uh, <laughs> they seem to be experts at it. Uh, boy. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. So what else is in the news? Is there anything else? You know, just every day you wake up, it's Trump this, Trump that, Trump. Uh, our governor announced today that he's letting indoor dining start at the end of this month. Uh, 25% capacity. Uh, you have to have proper ventilation uh, with HEPA filters. And what else? Uh, oh, and they take your temperature when you come in. Complimentary. Yeah, nice. we do that here. What's happening over there in New Jersey? Anything? Or uh, I know the governor came out against Trump today, saying, "Gee, if Trump had just come out a little earlier and warned yep. us, you know, we might yep. have saved tens of thousands of lives." Yeah. I mean, yeah. Literally, you have a president who's wound up murdering people. Oh, yeah, he's got blood on his hands, definitely. He definitely got blood on his hands. Horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, Jeff. Yeah, we can go in uh, restaurants inside now. Yeah, but how? what kind of capacity? I think it's 25%. Yeah. 25% or something? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we're tipping our toe in the water. He said that if it goes good, he could see by November 1st, going to 50%. And I think the reason he wants to do that, if possible, is because as winter arrives, the outdoor seating is going to have to go away because you don't want to freeze your ass off. I mean, they, don't, they can get those big, you know, heat lamps and put them out there. But when it gets really cold, those things aren't even going to work. So uh, uh, I think he's, he's got to get the indoor service going on some level and I, so he goes 25 percent now he said and then by november 1st by no he said we could do it earlier he said depending on how the the numbers are looking uh mm-hmm. you know uh, because he always goes by the science but he said if people start uh, doing this indoor dining and they violate the rules we're gonna have to say all bets are off you know so and he's, oh, Fuck you know what? Trump will have a rally and fuck that all up for you. Do you know what he's asking people to do? Rat on your restaurant. <laughs> he, no, what he's doing is he's going to have signs in every restaurant saying, if you see a violation of any of these rules in this restaurant, please call this number or go online to this place or text us at. Okay. Uh, he said he's going to let the people kind of police the <clears throat> situation. It's kind of cool. Oh, so. I got a bad meal, and they're not refunding my money. <laughs> that goes on Yelp. Yeah, but if they show up and, and they, he, they aren't violating any of the rules, you're probably the one that's going to get in trouble. So maybe they're violating a rule I pointed out. They lose business and sue me. No. 
They, because uh, they say it's anonymous. Ah, okay. Okay, so. Just, uh, there was a report on one of the local stations the other day that was alarming. They were talking about the fact that the situation puts a lot of shopkeepers in some awkward positions when people come in without masks. In effect, we're forcing them to try to enforce the law. And in many cases, scuffles and, and so forth ensue. Um, you know, it's a tough spot. In the case of, in fact, um, somebody that was the head of the bodega union or, or amalgamation was complaining that, you know, these people are being asked, in effect, to stand in the breach to enforce the law. Well, we have all these videos of people well, who refuse to remove their masks and start fighting with the person in the yeah, store. And exactly yet, that. If, if you go to uh, oh, any beach town community... And there's a bar, and it says no sh no shoes, no shirt, no service. Nobody ever gets into a fight with them over that, right? Right. Well, what about? Uh, I think I see a violation here. Um, I've got a picture of it. I won't report it if you give me my meal for free. <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of people get a little bit of power. But, you know, you they know, say, I see a violation, I'm yeah, going to report it. See, oh, no, you're not. Maybe, oh, yes, maybe, I am. Maybe, oh, no, maybe, you're not. Minute, maybe that's how things go in Kuala Lumpur. But here in New York, no. we're far more <laughs> civilized. No, uh, I see some restaurants outside of D.C. where you, you say you like Trump and they ban you or something. I, or, I think that's know. a good idea. The Red yeah. Hen Restaurant. The Red Hen Restaurant? Remember that one? That, uh, I think it was in oh, Virginia yeah. somewhere. Where they wouldn't let... Uh, Trump's liar in, what's her name, Sandra uh -huh. Sanders. Uh huh. Well, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah, and they kicked her out. They refused yeah, the she's right. She's got to a new anybody. book out. She's got a new book out. They were going to give her to Kim Jong Un for one night. Yeah. yeah. I heard about <laughs> what? Take one for the team. <laughs> what? Take one what on team. earth could she possibly? Uh, Kim Jong Un really? I mean, was, I don't believe that story. He was winking at her. <laughs> Well, maybe, maybe he likes guys. All I know is I saw I saw her the other day on, on I think Fox, and she's had some face work done because she's oh. looking much better than she looked before. <laughs> no Greta Van Susteren move. Well, you know something? They did a lot of work on Greta, and it didn't work. Hold on, <laughs> I have to get soda. Here we go. Didn't help. My throat is uh, I'm <clears throat> coughing a little bit. Oh, maybe I'm getting the COVID. Oh. The landlord wants me to go and get a picture of this thing. What? I gotta take a close up picture of it. Oh yeah, okay. Tell it to <laughs> smile. If you don't come back, who should we call? Uh, I'll tell you, point, point your camera over there while you go <laughs> yes, over to yeah. take the picture. Oh, this yeah. would be great. Great TV here. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Okay. Okay. Now so you zoom out, please. We so, need good action. So you're gonna go over there and take a picture, right? Yeah. Okay. I get it. Hold on. I messed something up here. Can you still see me? I don't your volume so we can see it. We see the we see the we cage. See the cage. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Good luck. You, you might zoom in okay, a little thanks. bit on it. You might zoom in a little bit on it if you can. Uh, uh, that's the best I can do. Oh, okay. Well, that's let's see you go over there and take a picture. Okay. Here, Wait kitty, 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 here, kitty, 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 kitty. Does the Civet have a SAG after a card? <laughs> hey, John Larkin, by the way, when you're on the chat, you're still John Larkin, just to let you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, he's not. He's Kenny Kierkegaard. On the, no, on on the chat. chat. Oh, on the chat. On the chat. He's still John yeah. Larkin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Here, oh, he here goes. we go. Here we go. What, what, what's he going what's he, to what, what's he trying? Oh, he's trying to take a picture of it. Okay. Yeah. Boy, he wouldn't even get close to the cage, would he? Yeah, he gets closer than I would have got. Hmm? Yeah. If that gets out, that's going to attack him. Is this entertainment or what, folks? Yeah. I think it comes under the category of or what. Uh, anyway, um, what else? What else is happening? Is there anything else happening in the news? Oh, What's oh, oh, the Oscars. Are you thinking about this? They're not going to have them. No, they they're going they have new new rules coming up. 
there has to be anybody who makes a movie it has to be inclusive otherwise it can't be nominated in other words yeah, I'm totally against uh, this. at least one character at least one in the one character in the film has to be a minority i mean there are rules like that and a certain right. amount of minorities have to be working on your picture so now they're going to have what cameos of people walking to the background to make it qualify or what yeah, probably <laughs> Probably. Jeez, come on. You know, I mean, I can think of several movies where actually I don't think there would be any black characters if you were doing the story. No. You know. This is this is the kind of thing that, that drives people to Trump. Um, you know, it's sort of, you know, when we go overboard on the other side, we, we definitely need diversity and inclusion. We need that. But you can't mandate. Well, why don't you, you, you do yeah. right. what you exactly. do? What you do is you do diversity by example, and you exactly. say you say, "Hey, your box office is going to be hurt if you aren't inclusive," and that's the way people will do stuff. You know, I mean, we've we've changed a lot of the the ideas and thoughts and ways we have uh, do things in films, and portray things in films because of the. Uh, the zeitgeist, the tempo of the times. Am I right, Robert? I think I think that is right. The messaging. You know. Uh, you mandate it, it makes you look like you're mandating it. Like and and quite frankly, it. I've been I've been looking forward to doing something and I guess I can't do it now. I wanted to do a white version of the whiz. <laughs> it won't work. Huh? That's an old Lord, one. An old, too good. Yeah. Now it's been it's the way it is. No, it's not an old joke, actually. It's a story that I was told by, who was the science fiction writer? Um, oh, God. I'm trying to remember his name now. Anyway, he, uh, he in fact, one time he called me uh, a disc jockey, so I called him a science fiction writer. He didn't like to be called science fiction writer. <laughs> Harlan Ellison. And he tells a story about how he, he calls up his agent, uh, and his agent is, he picks up the phone and he is just laughing his head off. And Harlan says, w w what's going on? I said, I can't talk to you right now. He says, I've got to, I just got to calm down. I'll call you back in a few minutes. He calls him back in a few minutes and he's still kind of laughing, but he can get a sentence out now. And he says, what, what, what went on? Why are you laughing like this? He said, I just got a call from somebody. And he pitched me on an idea. And uh, Harlan said, what was the idea? And he said, he wants to do a white version of The Wiz. Some guy actually thought that would be a good idea. So it's not, it's not a joke. It's a true story. You know? But there already was a white version of The Wiz, The Wizard of Oz. Well, of course. Of <laughs> course. But that's the joke. You know? I know, I know. Um, <laughs> This new cat is going crazy. What? What? It is just, it is just trying to get out of it, and it doesn't care if it really damages itself. Really? I can't watch it, you know. Well, then why don't you just? I don't know. I'll tell you. I have an idea. Um, why don't you put a sticker on there? Go down to the airport and ship it to the White House. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to get the banana. Is yeah. he trying to get the banana? Yeah. What, what? Is that their food of choice? Oh, they love bananas. Hmm. Yeah, but it's outside. No wonder he's trying to kill himself. Oh, no. that's... It, 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 no, no, no. Oh, oh that boy, I can see it now. Calm yeah. down. Wow. He really? calms down trying to get that, you know? Mm -hmm. It looks like it's, it's a like focused, a... Focus. Focus on that. like a jackal. Wow. It, it's a weird animal. What a weird, Holy shit. scary animal! That yeah. thing's what? That thing's huge. Yeah, he's trying like a, to. Looks like a lemur. It, it kind of does. It doesn't look. It, and does it have like a like a mask on it? it? Yeah. See how I'm it's breaking. trying to bite the metal. It's trying to. It's trying to break the uh, the spring. But even if it breaks that spring. It's still not going to be able to get out. It, it'll have a better chance. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to be able to break that spring. But if it does, there's another holder on the bottom. It, it could. Oh. In theory, it could. But look at that. It's biting the hook. 
You, you should cut the banana bat. up. So, cut the banana up so it can get the, some of the banana. Let's just get a baseball no. bat. Smash the banana he, so it goes through. Well, he's licking. Uh, he's can, licking the banana. I can definitely banana. give it more banana. No problem. Well, set them a shake. But <laughs> it should be able to get it. It yep. should be able to get it. And it's keeping it busy. Yeah, Without, if I just give it to it, yeah. 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 Don't be but, trying but the problem is, I got to put the banana on the other side because it keeps getting caught on that hook trying to get the banana. And so that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, but boy, this thing, when he doesn't like it, he just goes berserko. You know, he, he like tries to eat the hook. Like, what kind of logic is that? Wow. Yeah, he's, he's, he's like, well, he's also feels cramped by the size of the yeah. cage, I think. Yeah. yeah go, well, go put him in a bigger cage. We'll wait. We'll watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would, get, get I, would, I would drag him to the uh, SBCA or where, whatever. <laughs> and say, here, it's, you take care of it now. <laughs> he needs to get a tranquilizer gun. Just put him out of the They said they're on the way, and they will tranquilize it. Just, just for the sake of history here, I want to review the program thus far. Okay, go right ahead, Robert. Robert <laughs> will now sum up the program. We've about Trump getting the Nobel Prize. Yeah. <laughs> We've watched the civet. Um, is there anything else that I should write down? Um, we talked about Oscars. Well, oh, oh, we talked England. about the Oscars, about uh, the... Uh, Here's the alley. The weather. Minor shit. The, the weather. Yeah. But, uh, uh, I, you know, I should really look this up so I can tell you exactly what it, what it says. Um, let me see here. If I do this in Deadline Hollywood. Did you, by the way, did you see that Anna Ferris is leaving Mom? I don't know if any of you guys care about that. He's what? Anna Ferris is leaving the show Mom. Oh, Chris Pratt's uh, ex. Yeah. Yeah, let me see here. Uh, so I never saw the show. The Emily, hypnotic. Deadline. Now, I Kevin never saw the Kardashians, it. Denise Richards. I'm, and, 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 and. Oh, I can't find I'm the most story. interested in uh, Star Trek Discovery Season 3. They just dropped their trailer. And The Mandalorian uh, also announced its date when it's coming back. Oh, uh, here it says, after a health plan to offer 80% reduction in Cobra premiums. Gee, that might be cheaper than what's happening with me. Uh, anyway, where are we? Uh, I can't find it. I, I was looking for that thing that would have a story on the uh, the Oscars uh, awards line. Let me see here. Oscars shake up best picture eligibility standards. Here we go. Um, oh, come on, skip ad. Go. Um, let's see here. Having okay. Uh, it, it's the most dramatic swing towards true diversity, Oscar is laying down significant requirements in order to be eligible uh, for an award. Uh, you have to have at least one Asian, Hispanic, Latinx, what is that? Uh, black African American, Indigenous, Native American, Alaskan Native, Middle Eastern, North African, Native Hawaiian, or other Pacific Islander, or unspecified other unrepresentative race, or ethnicity as a lead or significant supporting actor is a potential requirement under the new guidelines with these ethnicities also mentioned for prominent production and marketing jobs, additionally employing women, LBTGQ, RMSOPs, members of a racial, oh, it goes on and on. Uh, it, they, you cannot be nominated for an Academy Award unless you have some of those meet those some of those requirements. Now, that doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense, does it? So, anyway, um, oh, we only got a couple of minutes left here. Oh. I don't think I can get in in that group. Well, in what, in what you group? know, oh. I think what you could do if you get your DNA done, we all have. You know, we're all kind of mixed. Yeah. Well, we all go back to Africa. Exactly. Yeah. Technically, we're all Africans. Yeah. So we're all mutts. Hey, bros. Yeah. Just, a, just <laughs> a lot of us didn't get out in the sun a lot, you know. Um, but I mean, it. Uh, you know, I'm, it, 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 you're right. So, you know, uh, what what else? Uh, that's about it. You know. Yeah. 
What's her name? Does it look too good? Kylie? And what's her name who does the, the briefings? Pinky today? Yeah, she looked pretty uh, tore up today. She looks worn down. Yeah. yeah she you looks, know what I like is uh, CNN's Pamela her. Brown. Who's Pamela Brown? Oh, well, she just got into it with uh, Senator Kennedy uh, about the oh, Trump yeah. audio. Yeah. I saw that. And she's, she's feisty. I like Doesn't her. Doesn't that guy talk like Foghorn Leghorn? <laughs> yeah. That's a joke, son. That's a joke. <laughs> it sounds like him. What, what, what do you mean, what do you mean, Foghorn and Leghorn? She looks like, sounds like it's, Foghorn. Leghorn. No, he talks like him, the senator what, from yeah, Louisiana. Yeah, I, can't, yeah. I don't know Louisiana. what you're talking about there, boy. Yeah. Hmm. I don't understand. <laughs> oh, they had that. Uh, did you see uh, Tucker brought on the gal that runs that that hair place? Oh, yeah, I saw that. He was in? Yeah. That was yeah, hilarious. Did he just parade her in front of the frickin' television for a few minutes, yeah, and, or what? And the woman was looking for her five seconds of fame. It was ridiculous. You know, it was ridiculous. Yeah. I'm not a political. I don't get what that whole thing was about. What because yeah, Pelosi because Pelosi point? wasn't was wearing so a mask. And they and what? they put her on there, and it, you know that she set her up. What the fuck you want? Yeah. Go away. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I what was it? What was the, the deal? big deal? Pelosi was yeah. stupid, and so was she for setting her up for it. Yeah, she, it's her. It was it was the lady's salon. She invited Pelosi to come in for the service. So, what's the fucking deal? They set deal? her up the for it. Broken? Huh? They set her up, pulled off the the video, put it on TV. Yeah, showed it to everybody, and then now and she's screwed because everybody's trying to chase her out of San Francisco. Oh well, yeah. see you later. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was pretty uh, funny. I went, what the hell? Because I was trying to bounce back and forth to see what was going on between Fox and and uh, CNN uh, on the uh, on the book. You know, today. the other thing I hate about those news operations now is they get stuck on one story and they just it can't. Was all day long. Yeah, all yeah. day it was it was the Woodward thing. Like this woman wrote here and said, "Why aren't you talking about the Woodward thing? Haven't you had enough already?" Well, you yeah, go you to know. CNN. Yeah. I was watching that. And the like radio was the first thing every hour. And then you go to Fox, and they weren't talking about it at all. But then once uh, Tucker and Hannity got a hold of it, it was all night. And, and well, Hannity I, got Trump on, too. And how, yeah, they, and they, they, Trump kept talking true, the same it? stupid stuff. Over. Yeah, same shit. Well, he I was about the first I, little bit. And then defended himself, and then he just went into, oh, I do all the testing, all the same old shit. I didn't want to panic people, he says. Yeah, I didn't want to panic yeah. people. Well, you fucking killed him. Well, yeah, yeah. So right. To him. You yeah. Fucked hard. Yeah. That's what she says. She says he's the most transparent president in history. Yeah. Is that a picture of a Barbie doll? <laughs> yeah, that's Pinky. Yeah. Pinky. Yeah, she looked really tired. Her makeup and everything, she looks like she's done. Yeah, like when they're asking the questions, she's thumbing through her book, yeah. and they just kept they kept pounding her. Yeah, all the, all the Woodward she did questions. look really yeah. weak. Mm. Oh, look at look at look at it. I have my goodnight star. I have my goodnight star. Oh, oh there she is, Adrian. You've grown. She got bigger. You've grown. Adrian, Adrian. Adrian. <laughs> We're saying goodnight, babe. Come on, you can wave with everybody. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Go ahead, Alex. You can start the start the theme. Well, I'll start the theme going here. Hold on a second. Let me go get the theme going. See, they got. Alex, he was a big, he was a big deal. He was a big shot. Yeah. Yeah. Before you ever got to <laughs> well, the Bay Area, big. The radio got small. Yeah. It, yeah. It's a radio that got small, not my yeah. career. <laughs> 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 anyway, hey, thank you very much, uh, Charlie, for being here. Robert, always great having you here. Uh, Brian, terrific, especially with the eye candy you bring along. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Adrian. Boy, that. that <laughs> That's a great kid you got there. Jeff, thank you so very much. Uh, John Larkin, thank you. Thank you, Kevin Stopper. And uh, the big owner of the uh, current owner of a civet. Uh, 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 Bree. Uh, B. Freeman. Uh, hey everybody, uh, give yourself a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our... That's our group for tonight. That's our, and that's our program for tonight. Uh, stay tuned now for uh, Jack Bishop. He's next with a little uh, show he likes to call, yes, The Intersection.
He'll be using Skype to take your calls, so give him a call. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there, okay? And whatever you do, not for yourself, for your fellow person, wear a mask, okay? Good night, everybody. See you later.